biggest battles are often not external to us but happen within us in the area of our mind. If we can win the battle in the mind, half the victory is won. We are studying an exciting series called The Conquest of the Mind and today on Living Strong we discover the importance of the mind and examine the battles we face in the realm of our thoughts and emotions. This is the first step in being equipped to win the battle in the mind.
Greetings and welcome to another telecast of Living Strong. It's a privilege to be able to share God's word with you. And uh, thanks to those of you who've been writing in and sharing how um, these programs have been uh, uh, ministering to your heart and life. Uh, we're going to start on an exciting new series of teaching uh, that we call The Conquest of the Mind. And uh, we'll be on this series for the next several weeks. Uh, we will be delving into various uh, aspects of the mind and uh, uh, the role that the mind has in the life of a believer and uh, areas in which we need to see change and, and, and growth and uh, transformation in the, in the mind. And so I, I believe that this series of teaching will be of great value and will enrich your walk and your, uh, your journey in the faith. Now, to begin with, uh, the Bible makes it very clear to us that uh, every believer is, uh, every person is a tripart being. Every human being is a tripart being. We have a spirit, we are a spirit being. We have a soul and we live in a body. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and verse 23, the Apostle Paul brings this out. He says, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless uh, till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as, as a human person, you are really a spirit being. You have a soul and you live in a body. The soul is really the 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 suke, it is the, the mind, the will, and the emotions, the psychological part of us. And uh, when we become new creatures in Christ Jesus, when we are born again, we are born again in our spirit. When we receive Jesus into our lives, our spirit is created anew. We become new creation in our spirit. But our mind, our soul, and our body continue as they were. And so in our journey of faith, we've got to learn how to deal with our soul, which comprises of our mind, our will, and our emotions, and also learn how to deal with the body. Because the change that God brought about in our lives when we received Jesus Christ took place in our spirit, in our spirit part of us, in our spirit man. But the soul and the body continue as they were and, and they remain as they were. And so we must learn how to, uh, what we must do with the soul and how we must uh, learn to master and manage our soul and our body. So that's what this series of teaching is about, on the conquest of the mind. How do we dominate and control our mind? You know, the mind is very, and a very important part of our being. The Bible word is a soul, but in common usage, we call it the mind. We're talking about all uh, inclusive of the mind, the will, the emotion, that part of us, the psychological part of us. It is a very important part of our being. Uh, for instance, our thoughts determine our actions. Actions develop into behavior, and behavior forms lifestyle. So our entire lifestyle have their has its origin back in a single thought. Our thoughts also affect our emotions, our feelings, the way we feel about things. Our imaginations, what you picture, what, we, what you visualize, can either energize you or it can impair you, demotivate you. Our mental faculties, our ability to reason, learn, understand, and think, concentrate, are very important. Many of us get paid huge amounts of money. What is in our spirit is normally released through our soul and through our body. So the things that God has deposited in us, in our spirit, for it to be manifested, for it to be expressed, it comes through our soul and then on through our body. So our mind is very important. And God is also interested in our soul or mind because He uses our mental faculties 
uh, to communicate to us or even to communicate through us. God speaks to us, and when He speaks to us through ideas, pictures, and thoughts, and so on, they come out of our spirit, and then they come into our mind for us to grasp, to understand, and then execute here on earth. So our mind is very important, both just for our, our life in this world and also for our life as a believer in our journey of faith. And so it's important for us to learn uh, what to do with our mind and how to go about conquering, conquering our mind. Now, all of us face challenges in the area of our mind. There are several kinds of problems that all of us would face, some very basic day-to-day -day things, challenges that we face, and some more complex challenges that people face in the area of the mind. For instance, there could be things like fear or inability to concentrate. There could be problems like confusion and, and not knowing what to do, being irresolute. There could be problems like having a poor self-image or low self-esteem. There could be problems of denial, not accepting reality and accepting facts for what they are. There could be things like deception and, uh, and uh, uh, wrong reasoning. And then, then there could be bondages or strongholds, as the Bible would call them, uh, that are uh, holding people imprisoned uh, in their thought life. Uh, there could be diseases of the mind, things like depression and, and so on, that affect people. Uh, on, on, on a widespread scale. So there are many problems that are related to the mind, to the realm of the, of the soul, and uh, we, will, uh, we must understand how to address these things by the Word of God and by the working of God's Holy Spirit. Uh, broadly speaking, in the Bible, we see three kinds of mind talked about or referred to in the Word of God. God's Word talks about a natural mind, which is the mind of a man who limits himself to his natural self. It's, uh, it's a mind that, uh, that is, doesn't take into account the realm of the supernatural, the realm of the spiritual. The Bible talks about a carnal mind, which is a mind which is very fleshly. It is a mind that is given to live, uh, living according to the sensual appetites of the body, the ungodly desires. And, uh, uh, and so the Bible calls it a carnal mind. But the Bible also talks about a spiritual mind or a renewed mind uh, as uh, opposed to the carnal mind. The carnal mind is a mind that minds the things of this world, but the spiritual mind is a mind that uh, minds the things of the spirit. Uh, the carnal mind results in death but the spiritual mind brings life and peace. Uh, we find these things talked about for us in Romans chapter 8. To learn to be spiritually minded, where we know how to operate in this world, and yet at the same time we are connected to the realm of the spirit, and we are open to the supernatural, open to the things of the spirit invading our world. So we must move uh, from just being limited to our natural mind and definitely more away from being carnally minded to becoming people who are spiritually minded where we are open to the things of the Spirit. The main thought that I want to leave with us on this program as we begin this series on the conquest of the mind is to understand that the mind is the primary battlefield for all of us. The mind is an area of conflict for all of us. Uh, many of us think that, look, all my problems are external. It has to do with that person, that situation, that circumstance. But if we sit and analyze things, we'll recognize that a major part of our battle, the challenges we face, really have to do with our own mind. And I want to suggest to you that if you can win the battle of your mind, half your battle is over. When you face a person who is dealing with you uh, in a very rude manner, we tend to think, well, it's that person, let's fix him. But if you can learn how to manage your emotions and react in a way that will surprise that person. Half your battle is already over. So our mind, in many ways, in many areas, is really the battlefield. 
And if you and I can learn to win the battle in the mind, we can learn to dominate and overcome many of the things that seem to limit and cripple our lives. Now, the mind is also the predominant place where Satan works against the believer. Of course, the enemy comes against us in several different areas. But what we must understand is that on a day-to-day -day basis, on a regular basis, the, area, the primary area of conflict, the primary battlefield, if you will, is the area of the mind. Hi, on the program today, we are delighted to have Dr. Mira Balraj with us, a consultant psychiatrist. Uh, she did her initial medical studies at the Christian Medical College in Velo, uh, after which she was trained in the practice of psychiatry at the National Institute of Mental Health and uh, Neurosciences here in Bangalore. Uh, she served as a faculty at the St. John's uh, Medical College, uh, uh, following which she sp spent some time in setting up three uh, psychiatric services in three different uh, mi uh, missions hospitals. Uh, she also has uh, spent some time training at the Na uh, National Health Services in UK. And uh, it's our delight to have you here with us, uh, Dr. Mira. Um, one of the struggles that we have as uh, Christians in, is trying to understand the, the interaction of our spiritual walk with the Christian mind. And um, so I think it'll be beneficial for us and all for, for the audience to hear about the importance uh, of the mind in the life of the believer. Thank you, Ashish. I think the first thing is to understand what we mean when we say, when we refer to the mind. And I think uh, most of us are referring really to the thought processes which go on in the mind. Um, many of us are not really aware of our thought processes. We may say we feel depressed or angry or sad uh, without realizing that there is a thought which has let, given rise to these feelings. Um, thoughts are very powerful. They can affect not only our feelings but also our actions and behavior and even our choices. I think as Christians it is also important to understand the importance of the mind because it is in the mind that Satan attacks us. Mm. We are told that this world is ruled by evil forces and our battle as Christians is not with flesh and blood but with the evil forces that influence the world. Mm. I believe that one of the primary ways that these forces influence, uh, influence us are by influencing the thoughts in our minds. Mm. Negative thoughts can spring from traumatic experiences in childhood or they can spring from destructive or negative words said to us either as children or as adults. Right. These negative thoughts can then t take root in our subconscious mind. Mm. Very often we are not even aware that they are there but they continue to influence us and give rise to negative thinking patterns. Mm -hmm. This in turn can lead to depressed mood or depressed symptoms. Now we know that many mental illnesses have what we call a biological component. There, is a genet there are genetic factors involved in the causation of mental illness. Um, furthermore, these then affect the brain to cause biochemical imbalances, which can give rise to symptoms. We see here a slide of um, the DSM-4 criteria for the diagnosis of depression and you see that if you have a depressed mood or what we call anhedonia, a lack of joy or pleasure, um, if it is present for a minimum period of two weeks almost every day and nearly all the day, this could be enough to diagnose a depression. In addition we see disturbances of sleep, appetite, weight, what we call psychomotor disturbances and negative cognitions such as guilt, worthlessness and hopelessness. We see here that even five out of these nine symptoms are enough to cause, enough to qualify for a diagnosis of depression. This is the point at which we need to seek professional advice and perhaps treatment. Thank you Dr. Mira, that was uh, very insightful. I'm sure it helped our audience understand uh, the the importance of the mind in the life of the believer and also to you know to seek for help uh, when you find that 
uh, there are things going on that uh, are of medical importance. Thank you so much, Dr. Mir. The enemy's schemes and strategies in the area of the mind can be broadly classified into three big things, three big areas. One, it has to do with deceptions. Deception is simply an attempt to cause you to believe a lie as though it were the truth. Or deception is also an attempt to cause you to call a truth a lie. It tries to convince the believer to consider a lie as though it were a truth or to disregard truth as though it were a lie. And both are deceptions. Satan himself is called the great deceiver in the Bible. Another great strategy of the enemy in the realm of the mind is accusations. We talked about deceptions. But another strategy the enemy uses is accusations. To accuse is to wrongfully judge and condemn. Accusations leave the person feeling uh, worthless, leaves the person feeling, I'm not worthy. It leaves the individual feeling, uh, God really doesn't care about me, and so on. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible refers to Satan as the accuser of the brethren. So that's who Satan is. He is the accuser of the brethren. He's the accuser of God's people, trying to put them in condemnation. When God says, I have forgiven you, the enemy keeps reminding you of all the wrong you've done and says, God is still angry with you. So there is this constant accusation, battery of accusing thoughts, which the enemy brings against the mind of a believer. And if we don't know how to counteract these things and how to deal with them, we fall, we scumb to these accusations, and we are left crippled in our walk with God. And the third and last strategy of the enemy is temptation. And temptations also come to us in the area of the mind. Now, this is how temptations happen. In, uh, in James chapter 1, verses 13 through 16, James says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire, desires and enticed. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. James chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. So what does the enemy do? His strategy is very simple. To plant ideas, thoughts, suggestions in the mind, which stir up our own desires. And then watch the rest happen. So many believers fall for temptation, not knowing how to fight this battle in the area of the mind. So... I want to leave this thought with you. The mind is a battlefield, perhaps the most important area where you will see conflict. And if you can win the battle in the mind, half your battle is already won. As we continue in this series, we're going to learn how to fight this battle and how to win this battle in the mind. Today's teaching is an excerpt from a free publication, The Conquest of the Mind. You can download this publication as a PDF from our church website or request a free printed copy by sending us your postal address. We invite you to visit our church website www.apcwo.org where we provide several free resources including MP3 sermons, sermon notes and free publications that you can download and use. You can also call, email or write to us to request your free printed copy of our publications. Please feel free to share your comments and prayer requests when you contact us. I trust that this message today has uh, challenged you to 
realize the importance of the mind and the battle in the mind. And uh, stay with us in this series as we delve further into the Word of God and learn how to win this battle of the mind. I want to pray with you and just believe the Lord to begin a work in you that will really set you free if there are any areas of struggles in the mind, whether there's basic things of fear and lack of concentration and confusion, or even things like depression and other serious things that, that might be troubling you. The Bible says that He restores our soul. The God of the Bible is a God who restores. He repairs and renews and makes whole the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions. So let's pray together and believe that the Lord will do that for you right where you are. Father, we pray for those who are watching this program. Lord, your word says that you restore our soul. Lord, I pray for those people who might be having challenges in the mind, in their emotions, in their feelings, in their will. They may feel very weak in their will, in their ability to say no and to stand up in their will. Lord, your word says you restore the soul. And so we ask for to restore the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions of people who are watching. Where they will be seen, a miracle taking place in their mind. But they will see your healing and your saving power, setting them free. We thank you, O God, for this. Pray that you inspire hope, inspire dreams, refresh and renew. Thank you for being with us on the program and uh, remind, tell your friends about our telecast. Tell them to tune in next week and, and continue on this series. I encourage you to go online and download uh, this whole uh, book that's available in PDF form called The Conquest of the Mind and use it uh, for your own personal study. Send us an email. Let us know how things are going with you and how these telecasts are blessing you. And remember, the best way to live is to live life the Jesus way. God bless.